The term tissue was coined by Bichat in 1792. And the study of tissue is called histology. In simple words, we can say that a tissue is formed by a cluster of cells that are similar in structure and work together to achieve a particular function. Now, a tissue is arranged and designed in a way that it yields the highest possible efficiency of function. Blood and muscle in us and other animals and phloem in plants are all examples of tissues. Let me ask you a question. Does every organism have similar kind of tissues? Any guesses? The answer is no. If you take a closer look at the plant and animal kingdoms separately, then you will see that there are noticeable differences between the two. Now, we already know that plants are autotrophs. That is, they prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis. Moreover, plants are stationary or fixed at one place. So they don't move from one place to another in search of food. Therefore, they require less energy to sustain. As a result, most of the tissues in plants are supportive and provide them with structural strength. Surprisingly, most of these tissues are dead. But just like living cells, dead cells can also provide mechanical strength easily and they need less maintenance. Now, the growth in plants is limited to certain regions. So, in plants, the tissues that can divide throughout their life are only present in the growth region of the plant. Based on the dividing capacity of the tissues, various plant tissues can be classified as growing or meristematic tissue and permanent tissue. But we will be talking about them at length a little later. Before that, let me tell you about the basic functioning of animal tissues. Since animals are heterotrophic, they need to move around in search of food, mates and shelter. So they consume more energy as compared to plants. And most of the tissues they contain are living. Also, the growth in animals is not limited to certain regions and the cell growth in animals is more uniform. Also, animal cells don't have the demarcation of dividing and non-dividing regions like in plant cells. What secrets lie behind the green stems and woody barks? What makes these organisms, these amazing living organisms, tick? The answer to all these questions would be the plant tissues. Now, we already know that there are two types of plant tissues. The first one is the meristematic tissue and the second one is the permanent tissue. Let's start with the meristematic tissue, which is also known as growing tissue. Now, a meristematic tissue consists of a group of actively dividing cells present in the growing region of a plant. For example, the tips of roots and stems. These tissues are responsible for increasing the length and girth, that is the thickness of the stem of the plant. These tissues have certain specific characteristics, so let's look at them in detail. The cells of the meristematic tissue are identical in structure and have thin cellulose cell walls. These cells may be spherical, oval, polygonal or rectangular in shape. The cells of this kind of tissue are compactly arranged and do not have intercellular space. That looks pretty cramped tight, right? Moving on, these cells also have dense cytoplasm with prominent nuclei. The term dense cytoplasm means the contents of the cytoplasm are close and situated in a compact manner. Now, vacuoles in these cells are either small or absent. Do you know why? That is because meristematic cells have an ability to divide and form new cells. Vacuoles have a function of storing food and other nutrients that a cell might need to survive. But there is no point in storing food and other nutrients when the cell has to divide. As a result, they lack vacuoles. Now, in addition, meristematic tissues are tissues in which the cells remain forever young and divide actively throughout the life of the plant. 
Meristematic cell undergoes cell division mitotically. Do you remember what mitotic division is? Right. It is a process of nuclear division in which a parent cell divides to produce two identical daughter cells. When a meristematic cell divides into two, one of the two resulting daughter cells remains in the meristem as an initial cell and the other cell is displaced into the plant body, which is called as the derivative cell. As new cells are added by repeated division of the initial cells, the derivatives are pushed farther and farther away from the zone of active division. These derivative cells may stretch, enlarge or separate into other types of tissues as they mature. Depending on the region where they are present, meristematic tissues are classified into three types and they are apical, lateral and intercalary. And in animals, there are five types of connective tissues. First, fluid connective tissues. Second, skeletal tissue. Third, dense regular connective tissue. And fourth, areola or loose connective tissue. And finally, the fifth, adipose tissue. Let me tell you about them in detail starting with the fluid connective tissues. These tissues link the different parts of the body and maintain continuity in body. Blood is an example of fluid connective tissue. Now blood has a fluid or liquid matrix called plasma in which red blood cells or RBCs, white blood cells or WBCs and platelets are suspended. Red blood cells and white blood cells are also known as erythrocytes and leukocytes. Apart from RBCs, WBCs and platelets, plasma also contains proteins, inorganic salts and some hormones. Now RBCs and WBCs are living while platelets are non-living. I'm sure you must have heard about hemoglobin, right? But do you know what exactly it is? It is an iron-containing red respiratory pigment which is present in RBCs. Now RBCs or erythrocytes play a vital role in oxygen transport. In vertebrates, red blood cells are oval-shaped nucleated and biconvex, whereas in mammals, the red blood cells are circular, biconcave, disc-like and lack nucleus. Next, let's discuss about white blood cells or leukocytes. Now there are two types, phagocytes and immunocytes. Now phagocytes are the defense cells. They carry out the function of the body defense by engulfing the bacteria and other foreign substances. The process of ingesting bacteria and other foreign substance by phagocytes is called phagocytosis. Further, phagocytes are of two types, granulocytes and agranulocytes. As the name suggests, granulocytes are irregular shaped cells characterized by the presence of granules in their cytoplasm. And there are three types of granulocytes and they are neutrophils, basophils and eosinophils. On the other hand, a granulocyte have no cytoplasmic granules. So after phagocytes, let's find out about the other type that is immunocytes. Immunocytes produce antibodies and are involved in immune response. So when you fall sick, immunocytes produce antibodies and these antibodies fight with the microorganism causing the disease to cure you. What we have next is blood platelets. Blood platelets are minute, fragile fragment of giant bone marrow cells called megakaryocytes. Platelets are also called thrombocytes that mean blood clot cell. The main function of blood platelets is to stop bleeding by clumping and clotting blood vessel injuries. So when you get a cut, platelets stop the bleeding by making a platelet plug, which is nothing but a temporary patch that stops the blood immediately. Tutor for more amazing video lectures. 
download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.